You're listening to Garden Master Ken Lane and the Top 10 Gardener Podcast. Welcome to the Top 10 Garden Show. And we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week with your garden questions. Just what are people talking about? Wow, you got a natural glow about you today. <laughs> that looks good. Because I've been running around the garden my, center. My hottie gal, you've been married <laughs> for a lot of years, and you still are the apple of my eye. You still catch my attention in a crowded room. You still, uh, you still pretty, honey. <laughs> Anyway, you, dear. we do radio together as well. We run a company together. We, uh, so business partners. So anyway, Lisa comes and helps me just field the questions. So welcome to the studio, Lisa. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good to be here. It is. Good yeah. to be here in spring enjoying. It's a beautiful it day today. It feels like it, yeah. Yes. I know we got another little, a little bout of cold yeah. and then it looks like it's up into the 70s. I mean, so. it could be July and there's a little bout of cold in the mountain. <laughs> it could be a hailstorm with three inches of hail out there. So you just never know. That's the mountains. That's part right. of beauty. Right. And, you know, people are always concerned. Well, can I still plant? Well, yeah, we know it's going to get cold. Yeah. Don't throw your tomatoes outside, but. Yeah. Yes, of course you can still plant. It's a wonderful time to plant. I mean, plant. the plants we have in the garden, all the fruit trees and the shade trees and the mm -hmm. evergreens and the lilacs and the forsythia and the rhododendrons and the azaleas and the... We don't bring those things in at night. They stay out there mm -hmm. exposed to the cold. We're trying to acclimate them, right. is what we call it. Toughen them or up. Or get them used to our climate. Mm -hmm. So even the greenhouses, we don't heat. We let them go down to ambient temperature. Mm -hmm. We just try to keep the frost off of them so they look fantastic all the time. Right. But we're trying to acclimate them too. So we're not, we're not bringing them in. I mean, a summer plant, if you're like tomatoes, <laughs> if you're planting zinnias right now, first of all, we don't have zinnias because it's too cold for them. Right. But we do have pansies and you know, all the other spring things. Mm -hmm. Now is the time to plant those. So you yeah. plant them seasonally correct. Right. Definitely. It does feel like spring, though. Finally, yeah. it's, it's, it's nice. It's during the day. I finally had a, just a T-shirt on. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I, I lost I lost my winter weight, which is kind of good. So I look good in an apron. So we wear aprons <laughs> at the garden center. For those who've never been, you know, we all have aprons. That's how you ID us. Uh, it's, it's anyway. And uh, I don't know. My where apron's you're thinning. It's that people are going, "Hey, you look pretty good. Spring's looking good yeah. on you." I'm going, well, thank you very much. I feel I feel better about myself and my customers. That's good. <laughs> I wish I'd lose my winter weight. I'll have to work on that. What uh, garden questions do we sure. want? Because I'm not touching the weight thing here. <laughs> moving on. You have learned something in 36 30, years. 30. I'm impressed. All right. So Cindy's out in Chino. So last year, her apple trees had a lot of colleen moth yeah. worms in them. Um, just doesn't want to repeat that. Yeah. Wants a good crop. She wants to make her applesauce and her apple pie. Without worms. Without worms. <laughs> uh, she knows how do you prevent that? Yeah easy this is easy well it's not easy it's going to take some work but if you know what to do it's mm -hmm. it's not that hard of work so apples and pears those two fruits get get in them called what we call a coddling moth it's a, it's a little tiny worm uh that it's actually a moth larva she comes and lays her eggs on your fruit the larva stage comes in and burrows it's the young burrows its way and lives inside the fruit until it matures comes back out burrows its way back out and then flies around and lays more eggs. So we call them coddling moths. We can have up to two to three uh, waves of coddling moths per season because mm -hmm. we've got such a long season. And so she loves to lay her eggs into that pollinating <clears throat> fruit. So as the apples or pears bloom, they're pollinating. There you see bees floating around, moths are floating around, and they're pollinating all the flowers. Well, just as the petals start to drop, she goes, hey, if I were to lay my egg right inside that flower, the fruit will actually form over my egg and then it's protected from all the ladybugs and all the uh, other things that eat my, my children and they'll be good to go. And so um, the best time to spray, the absolute best is just as it looks like, like, this, like it's snowing only with flower petals from your fruit trees, spray it right then with horticultural oil. It will obliterate them. So it coats that egg, 
They're always active about right then. There's a repelling action to it, kind of coats the flower to it. So hit them with hort oil. It's organic. It's as safe as you can get just as the petals drop. Now you've got other, you said two to three waves. So now you've got smaller fruits and they come back at you again. Oh my gosh. These things are irritating. So you'll lay your <laughs> egg on the outside of the fruit. The, the larva will hatch, burrow in. Once it's inside the fruit, there's no getting it out. Then burrow back out when it's mature. The only way to know when the next waves of coddling moths hit you is by putting up what's called a coddling moth trap. You put hang a little tiny, it's got a pheromone in there and a kind of a love attractant <laughs> for uh, coddling moths. And you know, nothing's in there for, for weeks. All of a sudden you go check that trap and there's like three moths in there. You know, no, where'd they come from? The next night you come in, there's like 10 moths. Like at the end of the week, there's like, the thing is filled with moths. You know, oh, coddling moths are busy. They're, they're making whoopee on my fruits. And they're going to be filled with worms if I don't do something. So that's your cue. Now, the Google, the Google machine says, yeah, coddling moths, just hang one, solves all your problems. That is a total lie. All a trap does is a monitoring system to know when do I spray next. Mm -hmm. So when the trap has a <clears throat> lot of moths in it, that's when you know, oh, that's a cute, spray it right then. And so just about anything will take out a coddling moth. So your oils are kind of organic and natural and safe. We've got an inside outside spray that's good for fruit trees. Come see us if you see that, get a coddling moth trap mainly. So, and if it's early enough, you could probably spray it with hort oil again. I think you can spray horticultural oil up until 85, close to 90 degrees, yeah. and then it gets too hot for it. So, it's, there's a temperature cutoff uh, that does that. But come see us. We can we can help you grow worm-free or relatively. You only have a few worms. Something gross. I did bite into an apple once. <laughs> only the wiggling body. Half the body was in my mouth. Gross. Half was wiggling the apple. I'm going... Okay, <laughs> that's, that's, that's kind of gross. Uh, moving on. Use All right. a knife. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, Our next question is from Lauren. She says, I love the idea of using natural predators okay. to yeah. get rid of aphids and other bad insects. Sure. Uh, but do ladybugs and praying mantas, do they really work well enough out in your yard? Well, sure they do. Yeah, Lauren, you... I, I, First of all, it's fun. If you've got kids, you need those because it's just fun. If you release ladybugs into the yard, you're going to have ladybugs for the rest of the season in your yard. You might, okay, you release 500 ladybugs, but every ladybug your kids spot in the yard from that point for the rest of the year, you get credit for. Whether they flew in naturally from 100 <laughs> miles away or right next door or you released them. You get credit. I mean, that's just a win. That's like, if you got grandchildren coming to visit, get ladybugs. It's awesome. It's fun to let them crawl around and just release them. Uh, but they are winged. They do fly away. So that's a negative. So generally what we say is get lady. We have ladybugs. We have light praying mantis now. We have the red wigglers. We've got all the beneficial insects you'd want to release into your yard. We have them here at Waters Garden Center now. You can put them out now. If you see aphids, let's say on your yuccas or your rose bush or your fruit trees or your wherever, you see a problem, take the ladybugs, wet down that area where the aphids are. Don't hose them off. Just moisten it and then release the ladybugs at the base of the plant. They're not going to fly away from the mulch or the, or the rocks underneath. They're going to crawl up. And as they crawl up, they're going to find stuff to eat because they're ferocious they're going to eat them. And as long as there's food there, they're going to keep eating. Uh, as soon as they're done, as soon as that food source is gone or your problem is gone, they're going to take flight and fly to the next available food source. Might be the rose bush, bush next over, or it might be down the street. We don't know. But they're going to be flying around looking for food. Moisture, because they can get, they're thirsty. So the moisture keeps them around. So they're going to have a drink and then they're going to have an eat. So those two things, and then release them at night. So they're doing this. If they just, if it's just light, they're going to go, oh, the sparkly's <laughs> over there. Look, I'm going to fly away. But at night, they don't fly at night. So if we release them at the base of the plant, moisten that area first, and then let them go. Uh, praying mantis are different. That's an egg casing. So you put this praying mantis egg case out there, then they release later when it's temperature related. 
Well, I don't know when that'll be, but it'll be later it's than temperature now. related. It's temperature related. <laughs> well, we are out of time like that. Lisa, yeah. Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners, be right back after this. Growing up in Prescott, we knew spring was here when my grandmother's lilacs bloomed. I'm Lisa Waters Lane, and my grandmother would be thrilled with the new Bloomerang Purple Lilacs at Waters Garden Center. They don't just bloom once in spring, they bloom again in summer. Mine bloomed three times last year, making spring last well into fall, and just $29.99. Come check out all the heavenly new sights and scents that are making this spring the most beautiful ever. Lilacs like Grandma used to grow and better. Waters Garden Center in Prescott. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. the Top 10 Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Family Garden Center. Listen daily as he answers the Top 10 Questions of the Week, streaming on Apple, Google, Spotify, or wherever you download your podcasts. 